Hey guys, or hey you, it's Dr. Remka. Uh, okay, so we're gonna talk about something that has to relate to some of the foundation of using cold as a healer, cold as a therapy. Uh, kind of the fancy word is cold thermogenesis. And I'm gonna do uh, some basics, some basics about cold thermogenesis or using cold uh, as in certain protocols. So I'm going to give different um, protocols and ideas and suggestions. Some you've seen from a lot of my posts on various pages and uh, within different groups and forums. Things that I've recommended are, you know, ending your shower with a really cold shower briefly, even 10 seconds. If you can work up to 30, that's better. If you can work up to a few minutes, even better. Things like uh, going to nitrogen-based cryotherapy places where you're using uh, air only and it takes about three minutes and it gets real cold. Then there's ice baths, ice dunks, things like that. Um, there's just keeping your temperature in your house lower and going to sleep, spending a little bit of time in cold temperatures, just even a couple hours a day make a difference. So I'm going to go over many different options and the pros and cons and um, of them and benefits and risks and stuff like that. But I want to start with some basics of why, right? So if I do the same kind of way where I'm going to tell you some things and I want you to start thinking about some of, huh, well, there's, huh, and you start putting things together before I put it all together for you. So here's some basics about the physiology in your body. So brown fat, and many, I have a couple of videos where I've talked about this. You might not know what it is I'm saying. So brown fat is often referred to as BAT, B-A-T, brown adipose tissue. So you might see um, articles that'll say, BAT versus WAT, BAT versus WAT, brown adipose tissue or white adipose tissue. So when most of you are trying to lose weight and lose that gut in the belly or love handles uh, around the hips or something, um, uh, love handles on the waist, and I guess saddlebags or the hips, right? That's white adipose tissue. It's, it's Most people are thinking of, oh, I want to lose some fat or I got this fat, I got the that's white adipose tissue. That is not brown fat, brown adipose tissue. It's a huge, big difference. White tissue is white and brown is actually brown. They named it that way for a reason. What makes brown fat brown is the very, very high concentration of my favorite things, mitochondria. Okay, so let's say that again. Brown fat is loaded with mitochondria. So knowing what you know about mitochondria, this already is a very different type of thing. And you might correctly assume having a lot of brown fat is a really good thing. Because you know what mitochondria do now, okay? So you really want, uh, the more you have, you know, the less white fat you're gonna end up having. So let's just go through it really fast. White fat pretty much is like a single droplet of oil inside there. It's that lipid fatty stuff you're used to. Brown fat has a lot of mitochondria. The more you have of brown fat, the less you shiver, okay? Um, the more brown fat you have, the faster your metabolism is. Brown fat, Activated working brown fat can eat up the white fat. Huh? Fascinating. So it's very well known in research that in general, and it's just assumed obese people almost always have less brown fat than thin people. Um, a couple little things about it. Babies, you're born with a ton of brown fat. So babies are, it's, it's tons of it because they can't actually shiver to keep themselves warm. So they need all that brown fat. Um, children, we lose it as we age. But children have a lot of it. They have a lot more brown uh, tissue and brown fat and it's activated. So they aren't as cold. They also have really high electrical charges. They aren't as cold. They don't shiver. So that's another reason you don't have to worry about your kids. They don't feel the same issue. A lot of it is also how much brown fat they have on them. Um, Brown fat is activated by cold. 
Brown fat is the holy grail of cold therapy. You're doing cold thermogenesis because that holy grail is building a bunch of brown fat. Okay, it's kind of maybe the thing people are really shooting for. Yes, we have electrical conductivity. Yes, we have hydrogen bonds. Yes, we have magnetic pulse and stuff. But all that's happening because if you can increase how much brown fat you have and you can activate the brown fat you have, you increase and increase activation, it's fantastic. You keep yourself warm. It generates heat and it burns. What does my, what do mitochondria do? A simple person would say it burns calories, but you guys know it's really dealing with electrons. It's increasing electron transport, which is increasing uh, quantum entanglement and communication and signaling. Like you understand what that's doing, right? But for Joe Blow, if you're watching this and you didn't watch all my other stuff, it burns a lot of calories. Okay. Even though I don't like that. Uh, it gets activated by temperatures in the 50 to 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So cold. So 60 is, you know, 65, you were working towards there, but to be really activated, the brown fat, 50 to 57 degrees. All right. Um, so things you need to know about it, that uh, leptin, which is a satiety hormone, um, is related. The brain um, has a part inside of it that what it can do is actually tell your body if your brain picks up the signal right, and this happens in your hypothalamus, and it's related to leptin and insulin. So having healthy leptin and insulin signals is really important. So the hypothalamus in your brain picks up the message to do this. Your brain can tell white fat, the white adipose tissue that you don't like or you want, it can do a process called browning. And it can turn white fat beige. So you get white fat, that is the fat nobody wants a whole bunch of, and you can increase cardiovascular risk, you know, diabetic risk, stuff like that, can be turned into beige, and beige will act like brown. So the beige and the brown fat are, um, that, that mechanism is in the brain, it's dealt with leptin and insulin, which you guys know a little bit about those hormones, which eating low carb is important to have that working right. If you have that working right, you can convert your white fat into brown fat through dietary means as well as through cold means. So if you're trying to use cold and you still have really bad leptin and, and, and uh, leptin and insulin signals, your Conversion of white fat into brown fat might not go as well as other someone else's who's been on a really controlled leptin insulin kind of thing. So I'm just giving you some basics about brown fat, the holy grail of cold thermogenesis. What we're trying to do is increase brown fat. And you can, can increase it in a couple ways. You can turn white fat that you don't like by turning it beige, we call browning. All right. Um, Brown fat stores are also super, they seeming, the research, they're related. These are studies with mice, but it's related to circadian rhythms. Um, so people who are on poor sleep cycles and sleep issues, insomnia issues, uh, have much lower brown fat and, the, and they have less activated brown fat. So again, brown fat's job is non-shivering thermogenesis. So you aren't shivering. It creates a lot of heat energy because it's loaded with mitochondria. Okay. Burning energy like crazy. And it keeps you warm. All right. Burns up electrons. Quantum entangles messages all over. It's awesome. Uh, so here we have. You really want to have increased bat, brown activated tissue, um, the more that you have, the more resistance to things like obesity and diabetes and other metabolic disorders you have. Um, absolutely. Okay. So when we have somebody with metabolic syndrome issues like that, a leptin insulin based disease, we want to increase their brown activated tissue. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. The, uh, and we want to activate what little bit of that brown fat they have. Okay. So we use cold is a really big way to do it. So are some other things. All right. So we'll get to that. Um, let's say it like this. Oh, let me say so brown fat. Let me tell you, they're looking at the research and it looks like 
and I talk about muscle all the time, brown fat acts like a muscle. But brown fat can burn calories, like it burn it does five times at a, more, at a five times a greater rate of any other tissue. Isn't that wild? And yet many of you don't even know about it. So think of it, it acts like a major muscle, crazy Ferrari engine, up to five times more of a metabolic rate than any other tissue, burning through the white fat, all right? So what it does is it actually uses, it, it helps the muscles and everything use a lot of the glucose in the blood. So it really helps with diabetics to bring it down. So, so if we have some, if we have ways to activate brown fat in people, we're going to be pulling glucose down, lowering insulin. So it really can have very quick results for people with uh, diabetic issues to activate uh, the brown fat. Um, so here's the brown fat benefits, right? The general things that you guys know. So I've said, because it's loaded with mitochondria. So everything you know about what mitochondria do, that increases. So everything the mitochondria do, that's good. The layman term, the really superficial layer of that is to say it burns calories. It's, it increases your resting metabolic rate like crazy. Um, but you guys, anybody who's taken any master's courses knows that if electron, more electrons are running through, we're getting quantum entanglement uh, and, and incre increased cellular communication throughout the whole body system, as well as increasing electrical charge and increasing magnetic pulsing, right? So you guys know what this is doing in terms of oxygen and capturing and, and signaling. Um, it's also going to decrease having more of it, the brown fat, it decreases your white fat stores. Um, and by doing that, it obviously has better body composition because white fat, the stuff we don't like hanging over the waist and, and too much around the, the organs, visceral fat, you need visceral fat. Let's be clear. Those, those, the kidneys and everything, they use that fat for energy. So it's supposed to be there. It doesn't, we don't want it to be zero cause you won't survive, but it should be a good healthy number. It shouldn't be too high. So you're going to decrease your angle for heart disease, stroke, diabetes with the more brown fat you have. So it's a really good goal to get a lot of brown fat. Um, definitely increases heart health also because that brown fat has so many mitochondria and they're using triglycerides to run through the electron transport chain. Triglycerides it is a real cardiovascular risk. Having too much of that in the presence of inflammation is a problem for uh, placking and hardening of arteries. So we really do want to keep triglycerides down. Well, brown fat uses it for fuel, lowers triglycerides floating around the blood so that they don't get to lay down and uh, do anything harmful. Um, it also stabilizes blood sugar. So I said about it pulls glucose out from the muscles. It helps fuel inside the muscles. Um, so stabilizing blood glucose, which is we know lowered glucose and stable insulin is the key to avoiding these chronic lifestyle debilitating degenerative diseases uh, typically insulin is the problem with all of these things so how are we going to increase the brown fat i've said a lot of it so obviously it's the holy grail of cold so temperature um things you can do such as keeping the house from 63 to 65 like that's not the 50 to 57 magic space, but it does help. Studies have shown even people spending a couple hours in a house of 63 and 65 have a faster resting metabolic rate because there was, there's an increase in brown fat. Um, go outside as much as you can on the cold, right? Let yourself be exposed to that, not keeping yourself too bundled up. Be safe, protect yourself. Don't get frostbite in any way, shape or form. Um, Cold showers we've talked about, the cold tubs, uh, cold cryotherapies. There's lots of ways to do it, but just to give you an idea. Number two, actually exercise can increase it. Um, your muscle cells actually produce this chemical called irisin, and by stressing them hard, working very hard, lifting heavy weights, or doing some type of HIIT training, not, this is not about cardio, it's about intense output, um, it helps the brown fat go uh, I'm sorry, it helps white fat be turned into brown. So it helps turn white fat beige and beige acts like brown. So beige and brown are where we want to go, okay? Um, the other thing is sleep. 
Number three, sleep hygiene, critical. So your blue light blocking stuff, turning off the screen, changing your light bulbs, using your red near infrared bulbs, stuff like that. Um, melatonin levels, uh, higher melatonin levels activate brown fat. So if you don't have good melatonin levels, you uh, lower your brown fat. It's another one of the many things melatonin does. Now, again, it might be why we would augment it sometimes as a supplement, but you shouldn't have to take melatonin orally, that hormone, you should be able to make it. So getting sleep is really important. So using supplements that help induce that, using devices that help and do it, your sleep is critical to why people who can sleep well can stay thin well. It's not just cortisol. It's not just insulin. It's not just blood sugar. You're also increasing brown activated fat, okay? Uh, stress management. So those things that I just mentioned, cortisol and blood sugar and insulin, things that for you to know how to manage your stress, um, those hormones are increasing white adipose tissue and lowering brown, uh, brown tissue. So brown fat, you might not have even known what it was. That's one of our big goals in cold thermogenesis. Okay, basics. Brown fat, white fat can turn to beige, which acts like brown. All right, see you guys.